Hey guys, so welcome to the third uh, example question for EMB339 Intro to Robotics. Okay, so today we'll be, or for this problem set, we'll be looking at forward kinematics, uh, joint velocities, Jacobian, force, torque, everything to do with that sort of stuff. So if you remember, if you watched the last one, I kind of explained forward kinematics. I'll just briefly go over what forward kinematics are again. So forward kinematics are basically if you know your joint angles or the extension values of the pris of prismatic joints and the joint angles for revolute joints, you can determine where your tool point will be. So the the coordinate of the tool point in the workspace. So it's basically forward kinematics. Given the angles and the uh, extension values, you know where your tool tool tip is. Okay. Um, we'll also be looking at yeah joint velocities and torque slash forces applied on joints. Uh, to do this, we use a useful uh, matrix called the Jacobian. Um, because in robotic design, you often deal with velocities, not positions, uh, when commanding motors. Uh, it's some, because generally, you can't give a uh, motor uh, go-to position 300, 200, for example. You give it, uh, rotate at this speed, um, or operate at this voltage, thus this speed. Um, so... We often deal with velocities as um, we can then move the tool point, and so we need to know uh, what velocity we need to give to move the tool point in a required direction. And so this is where the Jacobian comes in. Um, it's a useful matrix, the Jacobian. It can help us find the tool point velocities um, given the joint velocities. Um, the Jacobian is a matrix uh, that is a function of joint position, um, and it linearly... linearly ah, linearly relates joint uh, velocity to tool point velocity um, and also if you take the transpose of the Jacobian you then can relate um, the torque uh, exerted on joints uh, compared to the force exerted at a particular point so and that's what we are look do, do, uh, looking at doing so to the actual problem set itself we've got a robot arm the same as used in problem set 2 so a revolute revolute with link 1 being 300 mils and link 2 being 200 mils, um, and is required to draw an arc from 300 to 200, point 300 to 200, to negative 200, 300. The robot will initially be moving at 100 mils, millimeters per second in the negative x direction. And we must, one, find the joint velocities required to move the pen tip from point A. And assuming that the robot arm has successfully, successfully drawn the arc, now this is kind of dodgy in the scanning. Uh, once it's at rest at point B, someone pushes um, in the negative x direction against the pen, exerting a 0.1 newton force. Um, how much force torque will be seen in each joint direction as a result of this friction? Actually, sorry, that should be... I know this question. Uh, it should be once it's at rest at point B, someone pushes in the positive x direction. Ignore that negative x direction. It should be positive x direction against the pen exerting a 0.1 newton force. Okay, so we're told to assume the following configuration. So starting at point A at 300, 200, we're in this this style of right angle configuration with a velocity going in that direction and ending at point B, we've got a force going in that direction. See, positive x, not negative x, as the question says. This is what it should be, um, going in that direction. Uh, you could do it going negative as if someone's pulling against the tooltip, but it says it's meant to be pushing against that. And you notice that it's in this configuration, this right, right angle configuration. So moving on. So first we need to find the forward kinematics. Um, and I find this is easiest to do by slowly adding more complexity to it. So this here are two specific things. We need to find the generalized forward kinematics. So something that will give us a tool, uh, tool point position in the workspace based on the two joint angles, as I was explaining before. So what we can do, we can look at specific um, configurations and kind of build up as um, slowly in complexity until we reach um, the final uh, generalized configuration. For revolute, 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 that's not too bad, but if you keep adding more joints, um, I find this to be easier. So for example, we say we start in this configuration here, Okay, so that one there. Um, we need to determine what X, Z, and Y, C would be. So the forward kinematics, um, the tool pit, 
So X, C, Y, C are the tooltip um, coordinates. So in this case, it would be, well, it's kind of trivial. It would just be basically link the length of link 1 plus the length of link 2, okay, would be the total length there. And then you could just use a simple triangle. And using trig functions, using theta 1, so X, C would be link 1, length of link 1, 300, plus length of link, link 2, 200, uh, times by cos theta, which is what X, C is. YC is the same, except we use sine theta 1. Okay? We then need to move on to make it add a little bit more complexity, and this is where we get into the generalized. For Revolut, Revolut, this is, these are the only two kind of things you need to look at. And um, basically, to add complexity, we take it to the generalized uh, solution, where theta 1 and theta 2 have rotated um, some set amount of uh, angle, have rotated so much. So if we're in this configuration, and if we blow that up a little bit into an enlarged version, you notice we have 300, 200 for the link lengths. And this, if you notice here, see how x1 points in the same direction as link 1? Okay. And so theta 2 is measured from x1 to link 2, which is that there. So this, so from x0, if you considered, if you translated x0 over here, this whole angle from x0 to this link would be theta 1 plus theta 2, so which is here, okay, which I put here, and theta 1, so to link 1, really, that's just theta 1, okay, so we're trying to relate these things to x0, y0, because that's how you would, uh, you're trying to relate the tooltip position in the base reference frame, so we need to relate it back to x0 and y0, so to do that, we need to somehow figure out how does link 2, um, what's the angle made from x0 to link 2, and that's simply theta 1 by theta 2, as you can easily see here. Or, and so drawing that up, you can then notice that basically you just have two triangles. And you add up the x um, lengths and the y lengths to give you your x, c, and y, c um, forward kinematics. So basically you're going to have 300 cos theta 1, 200, 200 cos theta 1 plus theta 2 will give you your coordinate for the x, um, your x coordinate for the tooltip which you get there. You do the same thing for YC, except the causes are now become sines. So you have 300 sine theta 1 plus 200 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay? Um, okay. So, moving on. So we've got the forward kinematics described there. We then find the Jaco Jacobian. Now the Jacobian is... The reason we had to find the forward kinematics kinematics is the Jacobian is based on the forward kinematics. Okay, so you notice you have for the linear version, um, for JV, the linear, just the linear velocities, you have J1, J12, J21, and J22. Now, these are J1, the, these J terms in the Jacobian are defined by the derivative of one of the, of the X coordinate or the Y coordinate with respect to Q1 or Q2. When I'm talking about Q1 or Q2, I'm talking about either joint angles or the prismatic values, the extension values. In this case, Q1 and Q2 do just define our theta values, just define angles. Okay? So J11 is the partial derivative of x with respect to Q1. J12 is the partial derivative of x with respect to Q2. Okay? In other words, um, derivative, partial derivative of x with respect to theta1, partial derivative of x with respect to theta2, and J21 is partial derivative of of the of y with respect to q1 or theta1 and j22 is partially the derivative of y with respect to theta2 okay and hopefully you guys know how to differentiate cos and sine functions so cos goes to a negative sine and sine goes to positive cos um, theta and hopefully you know partial derivative so basically all it is is if you where you see q imagine q1 being theta1 for j1 you de de we're deriving this term, okay? And wherever we see theta 1, we need to apply derivative rules, okay? Um, all theta 2s are considered to be constant, and so basically, if you just had a theta 2 term there, um, it would go to zero. Um, but remember that cos theta 1 plus theta 2 is an actual angle where this thing's just a constant, okay? And so really, we could just think of this as being a theta 1 term here and a theta 1 term here. And so you'll end up getting th negative 300 sine theta 1 minus 200 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. You then do the same thing with respect for J12. You do partial derivative of x 
with respect to Q2. Okay, notice that you don't have any theta two terms in the uh, in this first part, and so that part will just go to zero. You then derive this second part with respect to theta two, and you just get negative two hundred sine theta one plus theta two. Again, um, I'm not really going to go into partial der derivation with respect to values. You guys can look that up yourself, or hopefully you should already know. If, um, but yeah, if not, go look it up. It's not. If, it's ba pretty simple, to be honest, or in my opinion. Uh, now, just remember that then you notice that I transfer, change these into the standard units of meters. Meters, um, radians, de uh, meters and radians and seconds are generally the standard units that we deal with in robotics. You can deal with in millimeters and then work in something else, but I just know that these values work uh, meters like uh, then transfer into radians, etc. I'm not sure. Millimeters probably transfer into kilo radians um, based on just the factors. But to make it easier on myself, so these 300 and 200 represent millimeters. So I'm going to put them into meters just by going dividing by 1,000 to give me this Jacobian. Okay? So this is the Jacobian um, for this robot. Now, when we're using the linear Jacobian, we can relate velocity. So the tooltip velocity. Um, is equal to the Jacobian times the joint angles, uh, joint angle velocities, or the or extension values. Um, in our case, we've got we actually know the velocity of the tooltip. We're told that it's moving at negative 100 millimeters per second, or negative 0.1 millimeters per second in the x direction. And so we've got the velocity of negative 0.1 meters per second in the x direction and zero in the y direction. So we need to actually change this equation around, this formula, in to get it to be joint angles instead. Now, you should notice that's actually Q dot representing uh, joint angle velocity, sorry, um, to get joint angle velocity. So you notice that this is Q dot representing joint angle velocities. So rearranging this, um, hopefully you know how to rearrange um, velocity uh, matrices and matrix multiplication. So we have to take the inverse of this and we have to put it on the front end of this side, um, which will give us the identity matrix here times Q dot, which will just be Q dot, and we'll get uh, Jacobian inverse times the velocity matrix to find Q dot, which is what we end up here. So we need to find the inverse of our Jacobian, which is up here. Um, so the inverse of a two by two matrix, if you don't already know, if this is your matrix, M equals, sorry, there's no brackets around this, so A, B, C, D, what you change, the inverse matrix is simply 1 on A times D minus B times C, and then you swap the A and D terms around, so you put A down here and D up here, and you make the B and C terms negative, okay? Um, so to find the inverse Jacob Jacobian of this thing, it would actually be quite annoying to do A times D and B times C. Some when you generally when you do a revolute prism 